Hi guys, Pam from the Woolly Dragon again. Uh, so I got busy working on a raised bed and I am trying a new idea. Let me show you a couple of examples of what I've been doing. It'll be out in the bright sun, sun, sunshine, so hopefully I'll be able to see something. Um, and then we'll come back and show you what I'm actually doing. Okay, so this is one of my raised beds, one of many that I'm actually making out of decking material. So instead of a two by whatever, which is really heavy. And since I'm doing this by myself and don't have an assistant to help me carry and move things, this is easiest for me. Now you'll notice on this one especially, this is bee balm in here, it's growing and it's escaping out the sides. So that was entirely my fault, but since this is a kind of an herb bed, it, you know, not big of a deal. And then I take a weed whacker and just go along there if it gets too unruly. But basically what I do, so as with all things lumber, uh, the measurements that they tell you aren't the real measurements. Um, I cannot remember what decking is supposed to be. I'll put it in the comments what it actually is. So it's supposed to be six inches wide. This is an eight foot bed. So they got that part right. Um, and six inches wide, but it's actually like five and a half ish, five and five eight, something like that. Um, so, which gives me, you know, a good 11 inches um, to work with. And that's okay. Um, but the thickness wise, you know, it's, it's probably about an inch. Now, is this the most sturdy? Is it gonna last forever? No. But relatively, you know, decking is relatively cheap compared to, you know, two by 10 or two by 12 lumber, easier to work with. And so far it's working for me. A lot of the beds that I have in here have been here at least five years. They're showing a little wear and tear, but you know, until I win the lottery and can afford the fancy Vigo beds and things like that, that don't break down. You know, this is what I'm stuck with. And I apologize ahead of time for the fact that the walkways here are overgrown. I just weed whacked here, you know, like four days ago. It's spring. So this is kind of how I do it. I, I take the lumber. It involves, uh, in the case of the four by eight bed, uh, four eight foot lengths for the long sides. And then I cut up two of the eight foot lengths into, into half, so it's four foot. And so basically that's, do math, six um, decking decks, you know, the, the boards. And then I get a seventh one to cut up to make my little corner joints. Because you, according to my father, you don't want to really nail or screw corner to corner like that, especially on the cut end of the wood. Um, you always want to do something in the corner so you can attach each one independently to the little brace thing that you have. And it also serves in this case to connect the two boards and keep them from falling over. So is it the prettiest thing? No. Is it functional? Yeah. Um, and it goes up fairly quickly. Uh, so let me show you what I have been doing on this new one. All right, so I'm doing a slightly shorter bed to go in next to another one that's the same length. It's still gonna be four feet across, but this one's only gonna be six feet long to fit into the space that I have. And still got the boards. What I did is I took my, my circular saw I would love to have a, a table saw, but I don't. Um, and instead of using the same decking boards, this time what I did, I had a, a couple of two by fours that I was using for a separate project. And I just cut them into one foot pieces. So again, since these are supposed to be six inches wide and the two by four underneath it is supposed to be 12 inches so you can see it's not quite six inches each so about 11 ish 
and that's okay. So, and again, if there's any woodworkers out there, carpenters, anything like that, looking at my work, yeah, I know it's not straight, but I really don't care. It's just going to go together and be a raised bed, hold a bunch of soil so I can plant stuff in it. So, instead of the same decking material holding the corners, I've used the, the foot-long pieces of 2 by 4 so it's a little bit thicker. Twice as thick, supposedly. But again, 2 by 4s really aren't 2 by 4s anymore. And that's that. So those are the long sides, and these are going to be... Ooh, out of the sun. These are going to be the short size. So these are still uh, 4 feet long. So instead of having the decking material go this way, I'm taking these boards and I'm turning them so they're following the same parallel and just attaching both corners and in the middle with screws. These are uh, number eight, two inch long decking screws. And yeah, I was a little wondering whether it was gonna come out the other side, but I don't feel any sharp points. Alright, so I won't kill myself walking too close to the bed. So this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be the inside of the bed. And what I would like to do, I don't have any on me, which entails, you know, a half hour drive into town. Um, I would like to get some silicone caulking. I may look up, maybe I have some inside somewhere. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So I can at least get some of the sides. One of the problems, like you saw with the, the bed with the, the bee balm in it, the plants coming out through the, the joins here. I get them as tight as I can, but you can see there's... I don't know if you can see my fingers moving back and forth. There's a gap. So what I'd like to do is get some silicone gel. I might be able to do it from the outside but I'd like to do the inside too. Um, but this bed is going to be a bed for some tomatoes that I'd really want to get in the ground. This is May 5th. Um, so yeah, I'd like to get my tomatoes in the ground. We've had a weird spring. Um, it was like 35 degrees Wednesday night into Thursday morning, 40 something last night this morning. And, uh, Tomatoes and green peppers, you know, and peppers and eggplants and things like that really don't like it that way. And usually I have my plants in the ground well before now. So I'm a little antsy, so I want to get it in there. You know, the rest of my beds are the same way, you know, without the, the silicone. So I may just chance it and just do, you know, if, if, if sometime I, I, you know, it does develop into a problem, I may be able to get another decking board and do the same thing on the outside to keep the soil in. You know, there's, there are ways. Uh, I may get, um, uh, oh, why are they, furring strips or something like that to kind of go over the seal and put it on later. Um, just kind of depends. All right, so I will get back to you when I'm a little bit closer to putting it together. Okay, so this is the spot that I've thrown down this old rug. It's an old area rug. And last fall, I put it down in this little spot knowing that I was going to put a another raised bed over here next to this one. So this is a 4x6 just like the pieces, parts that I put together. Let's see what's underneath. That's actually pretty good. <sighs> now, you can see where the earthworms that have been making tunnels underneath so there's earthworms in the area that's good now this rug is if I remember correctly is five by seven and my bed is four by six so this is gonna fit quite nicely 
in here. I may have to, this little area right here has got a little bit of a hump to it, but I can get my shovel and whittle that away a little bit. Here are some of those wild green onions. Severely damaged. Ooh, onions. But, uh, yeah. So that worked. There's a little bit of an encroaching that went under, but it's not going to be within the parameters of the bed, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And then when I'm done putting together this bat bed, I'm going to take the same rug, probably put it down over here next to it, for another bed at another time. Okay, so there's one corner. Two screws for each board going into the side of the 2x4. There is a small gap here, but it's taken up by the Two by four in there. So that's one corner done. All right, so same thing over here. Again, not perfect. So there, those of you who are woodworkers or perfectionist or OCD, turn away now because it's not going to get much better. But it works. Works for me and I'm okay with it. All right, now I get this other long side on here. I go get my shovel and kind of easily flatten that down a little bit. And then I'll just make sure it's kind of sort of square. Right now, it's at kind of a flimsy state. When I put the fourth side on, it'll be nice and sturdy. I haven't really had a whole lot of problems with the sides bowing in or out on these guys. The only one that I have actually had problems with. Walking, walking, walking. Ooh, it's bright out here. Is this one. And I'm not really too sure why it's a three foot bed. This side is pretty straight. But for some reason the side that faces the south decided to bow in on both beds. So this is basically two beds that I just kind of butted up together to make one long bed. So I think if I'm not mistaken, this is these are three by six beds. So I don't know if it was just these boards were just already starting to bow but again it's not a biggie i do need to bring some uh compost over here and put it down here along the side because it tends to dry out pretty quickly but that's another another chore for another day okay -doke. there she is together and i'm thinking i kind of like having these boards going parallel instead of going up and down like the corner post. We'll see what it does, but now here's where I dug out to make sure it was even. But you can kind of sort of see it's a little barren, so I have to backfill that again. But I'm kind of happy with it. It's, this corner was almost perfect. This one, not so much, but when I screwed everything together, it's got this little area right here, but oh, that one didn't go so great. I have to redo that one. And this was the, First corner also has 
the little gap, but that's on the outside. This one I had to do a no-no and put two screws that go into the end of the long sideboard. Not that it wasn't, for some reason, when I put in that 2x4, I didn't get it all the way to the edge on this top rail. So it's a little bit fluky. So I just went ahead and put those two in there just to kind of make it a little bit more stable. But I also noticed I've got some... Carrots planted here. They're starting to come up along here. And I've got, <laughs> wasn't paying attention, I, I grew a type of lettuce, Merlot lettuce that I got at Baker Creek. And of course, they're coming in kind of a Merlot color. <laughs> and I'm like, where's my lettuce? Well, there it is. And then <laughs> I planted some Swiss chard here, which I think. That's Swiss chard seedling, but I think those guys are tomato seedlings. I grew tomatoes here in this bed last year, so I think I'll wait a bit before I pull those up, just in case they are actually Swiss chard, but yay, growing thing. Yay, irises. And more to come. So look what I found. <sighs> Came from that hive, even though I've already gone through and checked for swarm cells. I know, bees, you don't want me here. Just wanted to show you. Okay, so this is day two of the build of this bed four by six and as you can see I've got it about halfway filled up more or less and I've gone ahead and thrown some alfalfa pellets some granular fertilizer that I had just enough to kind of go over you can see the little speckles down there and then like a, maybe a cup of wood ashes just sprinkled all over the place and then I came out today while I was watering and just kind of did a preliminary. I didn't get, obviously, the edge here. Um, but I'll go through here with a pitchfork and just kind of mix this stuff into the soil that's in here. And then I'll continue with another layer of the soil. And then probably do another layer of stuff. And uh, mostly I just kind of want to let it settle a little bit. I'd love to be able to get tomatoes into this bed as soon as possible because it's way past overdue. This is May 6th. By the way, happy naked gardening day. And no, I'm not naked, but only because the neighbors would probably revolt. Anyway, so, yep, so this is next stage. Um, basically, I stopped here because my back said, nope, we're not doing this anymore for the rest of the day. But I think this was like four wheelbarrow fulls of the, uh, the garden soil. So probably three or four more will do me. And then I've got other beds I need to top dress with the the soil. So this is, um, hopefully you all have access to places that sell bulk uh, mulch and compost and garden soil and things like that. Um, my place, um, I actually got the soil for my little tombstone gardens over here. Um, as you can see, it's still there. Part of the second one is in this bed in the bottom. Not much, but after eight years, not bad. But that's, you know, 
originally these beds were like six inches tall now they're maybe maybe three but that's all right so uh in the beginning what i was doing was borrowing my parents pickup truck going over um getting i think two bucket loads would fit in the back of their pickup because they don't have the longest bed pickup truck um which a scoopful i believe is three quarters of a yard so it was about you know yard and a half and when they say yard that means a cubic yard which when you look at bags of soil you can most frequently what the size bags i've ever you know seen the most commonly i mean there's different sizes but two uh cubic feet is probably the most common so not two yeah two cubic feet and so a yard is three feet by three feet by three feet which is you know less <laughs> not as much and uh so that little pile right there i've been having them come out and deliver so that's five lo five uh bucket loads which is five times three quarters so it's about eh, we'll say four cubic yards sitting on there um over there and uh so that's a lot of bags and if i can manage to do the math i'll put it in the comments below but uh a lot of bags of soil right there so i'm probably saving money there but delivery charges and the cost of the soil itself has gone up um i want to say that one bucket load was like 45 dollars so and then the delivery so we're talking about a hundred dollars to deliver you know 15 miles away which i needed it i put it on the never never card i'll probably regret that but Hopefully I'll eat. So next step is to get the wheelbarrow and the shovel out, get some more soil in here, get some more fertilizer and wood ash on here and wet it down, mix it up a little bit. And then I don't re I'd really like to wait until after a rain to plant anything in here, but I may not have that luxury. So luckily with tomatoes, you can put them in the soil and even if the soil does settle a little bit you can put more soil around the, the roots will develop from the stem as you go up higher with soil so that's not that big of a deal but you know I, I really would like to let it settle a little bit better but all right so next segment will be hopefully it filled all the way okay well it's filled up the sun decided to come out, so it's rather bright out here. So this is Saturday, May 6th, still. And I think what I'm going to do, we're supposed to get some rain for the next few days. But in my neck of the woods, the rain is just as likely to pass us by as it is to actually come to us. The days you need rain, you don't get it. And the times you don't want it to rain, it does. So that's Murphy's Law for you. All right. So I guess the next stage is let this kind of settle a little bit. Um, I'm so tempted to just go ahead and plant the tomatoes in here. Um, but once I feel it's clear... I'll do another video and show you what the setup looks like. In the meantime, this is the other bed that I'm going to put some more tomatoes in. Uh, this was a tomato bed uh, five or six years ago, and it's got like uh, leafy greens, some radishes, things like that. They are going to be coming out pretty soon. The center here is doesn't have anything planted in it, so I just kind of forked it up so it would loosen up a little bit and once the 
see we got some, a little bit of spinach radishes that I'm pulling up as I need them some uh, I believe that's Chinese cabbage over there on the end as is that the little oniony looking things are shallots and then this row right here is some uh, winter density lettuce which will definitely need to be coming up pretty soon um, so that's what winter density looks like they're not very big and they are better for cool weather and we're starting to warm up now it's looking like it's gonna equalize out to be more actual East Tennessee May weather now um, temps in the 70s low 80s for a while during the day and then 50s and 60s at night so these guys will start bolting if I don't get them used up so we'll be having some salads for a while um, the shallots I'm gonna go ahead and just leave them there because there's one little clump that evidently didn't take off there in the front and uh, I'll show you how I do the my tomatoes um, that bed over here is where my tomatoes some of my tomatoes were last year and this year it's gonna be my peppers and I've got it set up with this little cattle panel cage that I'm going to drape shade cloth over um, when I can find it. <laughs> I bought it so I could have it in plenty of time for before it got too hot and now I cannot find it. I'm pretty much tearing my house up trying to find it. So got some onions on either side which will develop as I go along. Here are some green onions that are doing very well. And I've got a little broccoli planted in the middle. I'm going to see if the onions mimic the smell of the broccoli plant from the cabbage butterflies. We'll see. And then here's another thing with some more green onions which aren't doing quite as well not too sure why they are two different types um let's see if the writing is still on this one i know one's warrior and one is green spear eh. I want to say that's green spirit. It might be because this is actually new seed for this one, whereas this one I've had for a while. I don't know why. And you can see they're both multi sown using Charles Doubting little method. It's a lot easier than trying to separate each and every one. And I've actually been doing this, did this with these are bulb onions. I'm doing the same thing with. We'll see if it works or not. It does make it a little bit easier. These guys over here, I think, I can't remember why they're in single file, but I may have just had more energy that day. All right, so more full garden review, probably tomorrow if I have energy. Oh, look, my shadow. Oh, look, my shadow looks, there we go. That's a little bit better. Not by much, but better. All right, guys, so hope to get the actual full garden review and walk through in the next couple of days just depends on weather other things I have to do as you can see I'm, I just saw my these are what are these guys I used to have the label here oops hello glasses just went flying Edith Warford irises. I actually kept the tag from however many years ago it's been. And as you can see, I bought one little plant and it's multiplied beautifully. Let's go rescue this, the breeding glasses before I forget. But so pretty. You can sense the theme with my purple and yellow. Although there is a little red over there. Okay, this time I really mean it. Bye.
Okay, I lied. These are the wild roses that are growing up this maple tree. They have very slight fragrance, but they grow up in there and also intermix that'll bloom a little bit afterwards is honeysuckle. So it's gonna be smelling very nice here in a week or so. This is the other wild rose that's going to be coming out as a dark pink. It's just about ready to go. Hee <laughs> hee.